fire leaps through another building in South Africa. This is a country with an estimated 12,000 structural fires a year. But this is also a country with the nose. The nose belongs to Tilly, a seven-year-old border collie who works with Kim Yates. They investigate an average of 10 fires a month. They began working together when they were in the South African police services. Many of their cases involve murder. Some involve insurance fraud. And the largest in Tilly's career involved the peace of South Africa. The investigation of this Pretoria West fire and suspected murder is a typical case for Tilly and Kim Yates. Known as an arson dog, Tilly is officially an accelerant dog. In a lot of fires, you need to find an accelerant to be able to prove arson, and that's what they look for. Arson usually involves more than a match, and the accelerants used to start fires leave odors behind, particular odors that Tilly must pick up. Tilly became South Africa's first arson dog in 1995. In five years, she's investigated more than 300 fires. Tilly began living with Kim when she was 12 weeks old. She was a good bet for police work. Her father was a narcotics dog, and her mother was a high wire specialist in the police dog display group. This remarkable dog was one of the many trained by Kim. Tilly's training began when she was 18 months old. Her brilliant nose can sniff out an accelerant that's about the size of a pin in a swimming pool. Tilly's original training only took about six weeks, and she still takes regular refresher training sessions with accelerants injected into fabric. Basically, we imprint the odors that the dog is required to identify. In her instance, we use five different accelerants, uh, gasoline, uh, kerosene, dieselene, methylated spirits, and paint thinners. And from those five uh, basic odors that are imprinted, the dog is able to recognize a, a broad spectrum of, of flammable liquids. Sitting is Tilly's way of indicating the odor of an accelerant and her natural high drive and focus makes Kim's work easier. But it's Tilly's discerning nose that is most important for spotting accelerants. Well done. Other things like plastic, nylon carpets, even wood, burn in fires, leaving confusing odors. But Tilly can pick out individual accelerants in this maze of smells. Taking Tilly to a fire scene is a time and money saver. A man died in this fire, and arson is suspected. Tilly quickly leads Kim to the spot to test. But Anthony, we can document this, please. Alert, eh? That nose can detect an accelerant through layers of concrete. Kim is able to chip out a small lab sample at the exact spot Tilly indicated. 
Suspects are quickly gathered, and Tilly is brought in. Tilly sniffs the line and sits. The murderer knows he's been ID'd. The odor of the accelerant is still on his shoes. A spontaneous confession results. This is the second time Tilly has made an identification in a lineup. Great for the justice system. But what are all these chemical fumes doing to Tilly's nose? Every year, Tilly gets a total physical. And the most worrying part is the inspection of her nose and its mucous membranes. These could be damaged by the noxious chemicals she breathes in. So far, Tilly and her nose have been declared fit and ready for work. In her short lifetime, Tilly has lived through major upheavals in South Africa. In 1994, orderly, peaceable change came to the country, and history was made in this government building with Desmond Tutu's Truth and Reconciliation Council. It heard soul-destroying accounts of torture and murder during the previous period of apartheid. The council believed the truth hurts, but silence kills. And then on March 3, 1997, fire erupted in the council's building. It was the second largest fire in South Africa's history. Two firemen were critically injured. Had the fire been deliberately set to stop the hearings? The hard-won political peace of South Africa could have been thrown back into violence and turmoil. Tilly and Kim were called in, even while the deadly fire raged. This building had definitely been put out of commission. Reporters demanded instant answers. Could it have been arson? Well, arson is obviously always a possibility. Tilly and Kim sifted through the debris. Tilly sniffed and sniffed. Speculation rose. And then the press was called in. Tilly had not found an accelerant. It had not been arson. It had been an electrical fire. The commission and the peace were preserved. And Tilly had added to her press clippings. Tilly and Kim continued to work all over South Africa. When Tilly isn't on the job, her affection for Kim bubbles over. Tilly helped keep the peace during a troubled time, and she's still South Africa's number one nose. Like any dog, Murphy loves to play in her backyard. Her favorite game is triple frisbee. But Murphy isn't just any fun-loving Labrador retriever. Murphy has a very important job, one that's even more complicated than triple frisbee. Unfortunately, her job requires a regular stop to do something most dogs hate. It's a visit to the vet for a checkup and a bath. Murphy stoically puts up with this because it's her clue that she's on her way to the job she loves. Murphy is a therapy dog who often works at a local hospital. It's a job she takes seriously. As her ID vest goes on, Murphy changes from pet to therapist. Her facial expression changes. She seems to sense that she's in a working environment. Murphy works regularly at Meritor Hospital, 
with her owner, Lynn Malater. That's good, girl. Are you going to work? Let's go see Carol. Hi, Carol. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Hi, Murphy. Hi, Carol. How are you? Are you ready to work? Murphy is in such demand that she even has a schedule of appointments for the day. You ready to go to work? Go get your bag. Hurry up. Go get it. But before her rounds, Murphy needs one thing from her doctor's bag. Good girl. Bring it here. Come on. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Murphy's job when she's in the hospital isn't quite the same as therapy dogs who visit to cheer people up. Catch Murphy. Murphy helps people with their physical therapy. She gives them motivation to stretch, walk, and even to talk. Like some doctors and most freelancers, Murphy makes house calls. She's been working with seven-year-old Megan Sklar for about three years. One of Megan's favorite activities is the game Simon Says. Okay, so you're going to have to put your hands up over your head. Megan has cerebral palsy, and these games help her practice using her muscles. As a young child, Megan found therapy very difficult. Murphy came along at just the right time. It had gotten to the point, though, when Megan was about three and a half, we actually stopped physical therapy because we would have to fight with her to get her to go to physical therapy. She wouldn't work for the physical therapist, and it became really frustrating. Then Megan met Murphy. It was love at first sight. Megan and Murphy have a special connection. I mean, this is, it took them about all of three seconds to bond. Is that ever hard work? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought so. I thought so. From then on, everything changed. The motivation that Murphy can provide is, is one that humans can't provide. OK. OK, ready? No! <laughs> Simply put, Murphy makes therapy fun. So she's come a long way with her physical therapy, and a lot of it has to do with Murphy, just because she's excited to go and she's willing to work. My hopes were that Murphy would be able to essentially just help Megan participate in therapy, and as it turns out, she's done so much more than that. Go for what? I think that Megan wouldn't be where she is today without having Murphy around because I don't think I could have been able to, to convince her to work this hard. Megan has come a long way with Murphy by her side. She took her first steps in therapy when Murphy was there. And together, they'll take many more. Sorry, Murphy, I don't go back to school. I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay. Whoopsie. Like Megan, many patients find their therapy difficult, frustrating, and even painful. All right. Nice job. I think Murphy needs a little bit of love and okay. cut her a little bit with their right hand. Good job, Murphy. Therapists need all the help they can get to keep patients motivated. Okay, so now really Murphy has a special aptitude. Her sensitivity allows her to adjust to each individual patient. <laughs> she seems to know which patient she has to be very slow and very deliberate and which one she can push the limits to bend over, to take that extra step, to walk just a little bit farther to reach a little bit higher. 
You know, pull yourself back and that using your body, not your arms. Good. Yeah. Good, Murphy. Good, Murphy. When working on stretching exercises, Murphy's supposed to give someone the ball after they throw it. But sometimes she'll drop it at their feet instead. She thinks that you can pick that up. Good reaching. Good. Forcing them to bend down and reach to their limit. And we've learned when she does something that we're not anticipating, there has to be a reason. We don't know what it is, but it gets the results. She knows what to do. It's like she's thinking all the time with the patience. Kiss, 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 kiss. Oh, oh, oh gentle. gentle. Those eyes and those kisses are everything to me since I lost, lost my uh, dog last year. So she's, uh, she's not a, a therapy uh, pet, but my friend. Murphy is especially good with children. Recently, she has started work with another young child who needs her gentle help. Two-year-old Haley Bollig, nicknamed Jojo, has an undiagnosed illness that causes her muscles to be weak. Where's Murphy? Can you get, yes, that's Murphy. Like Megan, Haley didn't want to go to therapy anymore until she met Murphy. Can you give Murphy a kiss? Can you say kiss? <laughs> Once again, it was Murphy who really gave her a reason to try. For Haley, walking changed from a job to laughs and smiles with her new friend. Haley used to need someone's hand while she walked, but now she's on her own. Murphy also helps Haley gain skills so she can use all of her muscles in every part of her body, but especially in her legs. is difficult for Haley, so Murphy is used to try and get her to talk. <laughs> Did you get one? Yeah. Was it nice? They've only been working together for six months, but Haley has come a long way, and she thinks it's fun. And then last spring, um, we had a really hard time motivating her, and that's when we introduced Murphy, and then Haley's just made progress by leaps and bounds since then. He's really been a great motivator for her. Uh -oh. Mom's keys are up there. Let's, go let's, get, let's get the keys for Murphy. Murphy, good job, George. Murphy, let's go. Okay, another step up. Push hard, George. Push, push hard, push, 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 push. Good job. Good work, Jojo. Nice work. Two more. You see? You see, Murphy? Murphy's coming up. Up, oh, up. Oh. Good work, Jojo. Yeah. Oh, very fancy. <laughs> Murphy doesn't have a medical degree, but she does have a wonderful, mysterious ability to know just what's needed. Is that the dog? What do you have? After all, therapy is difficult work for a tiny patient like Haley, and Murphy senses it. Because he's become both a therapist and a friend. Can you say night, night? Oh. 
This bakery sells gooey, yet wholesome delicacies, and every last carob-coated crumb is made for dogs, and only dogs. This is the Toronto outlet of the Three Dog Bakery chain. There may be three dogs, but the youngest is already employee of the month. Madison is a six-month-old lab mix who lures in the customers. You should be fine with that. I like the barbecue sauce. They like their big rawhide bones. Oh, do they? Yeah. Two of the big rawhides? Yeah. Oh, okay. We have these guys. These are peanut butter bones dipped in carob. We can put your dog's names on them if you want. Madison's an enthusiastic tester for the clever dog treats. That's for Madison. Who cares that they're healthy? Madison just has to know the taste of a bestseller. She also knows when to let one of the bosses talk. We don't use any chemicals. We don't use any preservatives. Uh, we don't add salt or sugar to any of the treats. And because they're human-grade ingredients that we use, everything is very clean. All right, guys, here you go. The yogurt and honey frostings, the biggest hit. Come here, ladies. Madison, who is my baby? Madison has also branched out into public relations. It doesn't hurt business to be the favorite dog of the neighborhood. But it's an exhausting job. All that intense greeting, the testing, the being cute. It can send even the most dedicated bakery employee into doggy dreamland. Chicken flavored bark and fetch cookies.